let me begin by congratulating you on your call to the bar. This is the second time that we have had to conduct a mass call by video conferencing. The pandemic has been a watershed moment for all of us involved in the administration of justice. For one thing, it has brought the use of technological tools into the mainstream of many legal tasks and processes. Much of this has involved simply migrating traditional offline processes to a digital online format. But it would be a mistake to think that this is the main gain to be had from the integration of technology into our work as judges and lawyers. Instead, I suggest that the true potential of technology lies in its ability to radically transform processes altogether. Getting called to the bar means so much more than earning a qualification. It means that you take on the mantle of service and commit yourself to learning and the pursuit of excellence, not for their own sakes, but for a higher and far more worthy cause, the administration of justice. I suggest that this has at least three implications for how we must conduct ourselves as professionals in the face of the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. First, the professional's commitment to public service over narrow self-interest equips her with what is, in my view, the appropriate lens through which to view the impact that disruptive legal technologies might have on the profession. The second major implication of the changing environment for us as professionals united in service of justice is that we must be proactive rather than reactive to the justice needs of our society. My third and final point on the implications of the rapidly changing conditions that confront us relates to what Dean Pound had referred to as the professional's pursuit of a learned art. I spoke some years ago about a concept known as the decreasing half-life of knowledge, which refers to the amount of time that lapses before half of all the knowledge in a particular field is superseded, either because it has been found to be untrue or because it has simply become irrelevant. The half-life of knowledge in the sciences such as engineering and medicine has continued to fall as advances in science and technology render old practices and precepts obsolete ever more quickly. And the law is not immune to this. We must never overlook the things that I hope will always stay the same. First an unwavering commitment to the core values and ethics of our profession. Second, a heart of service for the society we live in. The pro bono spirit is among the very best traditions of our bar, and I hope that you will, as your seniors have before you, do your part to keep it growing. Third, we are first and foremost a professional community learn to lean on that community. Look for role models and mentors to whom you can turn for guidance and inspiration. There is no shortage of senior lawyers who embody the very best qualities of our profession. Finally, as much as you will benefit from the work of your seniors, learn also to pay it forward. The Law Society and the Singapore Academy of Law both provide excellent avenues for you to contribute to the work of our professional community and I hope you will actively participate in the various committees and focus groups. On behalf of the judiciary, I welcome you to this profession and I extend my heartiest congratulations and best wishes to all of you for a satisfying and fulfilling career ahead. Thank you.